Hello. Uh, my name is Mohan Bajaluri. I'm the founder, president, and CTO of uh, Zap Surgical Systems. And I want to walk you through some of the details about our machine here, ZAPX Radio Surgery System. Um, most of you have seen uh, other videos probably on the internet, and this is a little bit of a uh, closer look at various parts of the system. Uh, we will start with uh, what we have here on the floor. Um, you see a dark area and a brighter area here. Uh, this is, there's a significance to this, and whenever somebody is standing here, inside here, all the radiation stops, all the movement stops, all the mechanical movements as well as all the radiation stops. And that's accomplished by a laser scanner that's in the floor here. There's one other laser scanner on the other end. And that's watching this area very carefully. And if anybody steps in, everything stops. Now, why is that important? Outside this dark area, the radiation levels, when the machine is treating somebody, it's public level safety. What it means is, um, you know, somebody without any radiation badge can be walking around here and it's completely safe. Now let's think about it for a second. Uh, almost all the other radiation machines are typically in a radiation bunker and outside the radiation bunker there is enough radiation leakage outside that a public cannot be walking around, cannot be staying there. Only a radiation worker with a radiation badge can actually stay outside the bunker. Here inside the room, outside this dark area, public can be walking around. That is amazing. Okay, now we're gonna talk about you know, different parts of the system. Uh, this particular piece right here, it's a big ring, it's about nine foot tall, and it gets dropped into a two foot pit in here, and it's anchored down here. So this, this, this r r big piece here, it comes in on a transporter, it, it, it uh, lowers itself into the, into the pit and gets anchored down there. And all the other parts actually get attached to this big piece right here. So this is a very important piece here and it almost weighs about 10 tons. Um, there is a bearing inside here. So this entire machine can actually rotate around this particular um, bearing, okay? And this rotation is called axial rotation. You can imagine this is like a CT machine and this is the axial rotation and the axis of the axial rotation is along this axis right here. It goes through the patient all the way through. Um, the amazing thing is when we're rotating here, we are moving uh, parts that weigh about 20 plus tons and the rotation is very, very accurate and uh, the wobble at the center of the rotation is less than a quarter millimeter. Uh, the motor is actually wrapped around the bearing itself uh, which is uh, kind of innovative. Otherwise, you'll have a huge gearbox and a big motor and all that stuff. We don't need any of those things here. The, mor uh, the motor is nicely wrapped around right there. Um, there is a second axis, however, and uh, that's right now pointing uh, that way. It's about 45 degrees to the axial axis, and that axis we call oblique axis. Oblique axis, when it rotates, uh, this whole, this part actually rotates this way. So. The first rotation, axial rotation, rotates um, around this axis, um, around this bearing, and uh, the oblique axis rotation, oblique rotation, goes along um, this direction. And using these two axes, we can move the LENAC to various parts of the sphere, and it is always aiming at the isocenter, uh, the center of the brain, wherever the tumor is, so on and so forth. And, um, by, move, by using these two axes, now we can cover most of the sphere, but not all of the sphere. Um, a sphere uh, is considered four pi steradians of angles, um, and this can cover, these two axes can actually cover 2.8 pi steradians. That is a lot more than a cyber knife can do, a gamma knife can do, any Linux system can do. So in that sense, we have more access to the patient, more angles that you can shoot at, uh, at the tumor, um, than any other technology that currently exists. Okay, now let's look at uh, the axial axis here itself. So this particular thing looks like a motor, but it's not a motor. Uh, this is something called a rotary pass-through. Uh, that means the cables are coming in and through here that do not rotate, but on this side, they, everything rotates. So what actually passes through this rotary pass-through is water, power, and data. Um, 
and it's amazing that we can actually pass something uh, like water without any leakage uh, or any other stuff here. And the reason for that is that because of this rotary pass-through, now we can rotate this axis 360 degrees and we don't have to unwind. We can keep on going forever this way. And the same thing applies to the oblique axis. Both axes can be rotated forever. And that is a very good, uh, cool technology uh, that we're offering in this machine. Uh, you can also see here, there is a porthole. Uh, it's actually leaded glass. You can actually see the patient. Uh, if you come in here and look through this porthole, you can see your patient while the patient is being treated, which is also very amazing. For a, uh, for a radiation machine to be able to uh, you, to be able to see the patient while the treatment is going on uh, has, has never been done before. This is the first time. Okay, um, so now we're on the other side of the machine here. And here you can also see a second viewport. Um, again, a way to see your patient. And also for the patient, you know, patient can see outside. So it actually, uh, you know, removes the anxiety. Uh, it also, the fact that the, you know, your family can be close by, uh, the operator, the doctor, everybody is so close by is very reassuring to the patient. Um, we also have that second scanner we talk, talked about, the laser scanner, it's right here. Um, again, it's monitoring me. Right now it knows that I'm standing in this gray area, darker area. Uh, as soon as I step out, it also knows that I'm outside. Um, now, if we're going to move to the front of the machine where the patient is going to enter next, and we're going to look inside of what's going on. Okay, now we are on the front side of the machine, and I want to actually point out one tiny little feature here. We have a, uh, an access hole here where we can pass um, uh, anesthesia cables or any other cables we need to pass in and out you know, if, we need, if we need it for the patient. Okay, we have uh, this, uh, this access hole, one on this side, one on that side. And obviously this is the, where the patient is going to lie down. This is the patient table. And you can see this nice white big ring here kind of gives you uh, the, the perspective of going into a wider bore than what it actually is. It turns out this, the actual opening is about 83 centimeters, which is a lot bigger than any CT scanner or any MRI scanner. And once you go inside, it actually opens up to double the space. It's 165 centimeters. So you have a lot of space, so there's no reason to worry about uh, claustrophobia or anything else. We also have windows in there, as, you, as we talked about earlier. You, you know, patient can see outside, patient can, uh, doctors can see inside. So uh, it's very, very comfortable in that sense. Uh, this particular table uh, has three degrees of freedom. Uh, it can go in and it can go left and right and it can go up and down. And this is how we make sure that the target, the tumor, um, is exactly at the center at all times, right in front of the beam. Um, we also have something called a shell that closes this way and the door that goes up. So the next thing uh, we're going to do is actually show you how um, the patient is loaded. Okay, now we're going to talk about how to load a patient. Um, we are very focused on patient safety. So when we are loading the patient, we want the operator to have a clear view of the patient because there are very heavy parts that are rotating around. We don't want somebody to stick their hand out or whatever. Now, if the operator is inside this area, um, you cannot actually move anything um, because if they're inside here, they can hurt themselves. So we want not only the patient safety, we also want the operator safety. So we actually force them to stand here and this is the only way you can load the patient. So you just come here and you clear the e-stop and you just press and hold one button and you can see very quickly the table moving. Table is going inside right now. And as you can see, all the movements are done by just pressing and holding one button. Now if I let go, if I walk away, everything stops. If I go inside, everything stops. Okay, now uh, the shell is closing. You can see it rotate. Everything is very smooth. As the sounds are almost very silent, very quiet. There's no heavy movie, even though heavy parts are moving, but it's very, very quiet. 
Now once the shell closes, the door comes up and this is operated by pneumatics. Okay, now the patient is all the way in and I think this is a great opportunity to talk about it quickly, how do we get to the patient if the power totally goes out? Uh, first of all, we have a UPS system that we can still get the patient out by opening the shell, opening the door and everything. But let's say even the UPS system crashed and everything crashed, how do we get to the patient? So I simply walk over here and there's this valve here that I just turn. If I just turn this valve, you can hear um, the air going down and by gravity this just goes down. So in less than 30 seconds, as soon as this goes down, I can just start pulling this table out and I have full access to the patient in less than 30 seconds. Now let's think about that. If something like this were to happen for any other system and the operator is outside the radiation vault and by the time they hit any stop, open this heavy lead door and come all the way in through the maze all the way to the patient, it takes a lot more than 30 seconds, typically one to two minutes. So even though we have such a uh, system that's fully enclosing the patient, you can have the access to the patient within 30 seconds. Okay, next uh, we're going to uh, see inside um, of the machine of what we have inside. So I'm going to uh, move the table inside and the camera is moving with it, which is kind of cool. All right, so the lighting, lighting for the patient uh, is actually under the table. So as we go inside, you will see a lot more um, brighter inside, okay? So now that we're inside, I'm gonna walk closer and I'm gonna explain various parts. You should be able to move the video around to see various parts. Now, that big uh, metallic piece that uh, right in front is called uh, the collimator. That's where the LINAC uh, rests on top of it and the radiation comes out of that. And you see a disc at the end and that disc has all these small holes. You see those holes. And as each, right now, right now, um, actually none of the holes are lined up, but we can spin that wheel around and line up a different hole. And depending on the size of the hole, the beam size is different. So we have eight collimators and each collimator uh, can be switched around within one second. And the eight collimators go from four millimeters all the way up to the 25 millimeters in eight steps, okay? And then um, the collimation is so good here, the, the leakage for the patient is uh, 50 times less than the regulation that uh, dictates. Now, um, Behind the patient's, the phantom there, behind the phantom there is a square panel and that is called amorphous silicon detector or a flat panel detector. And that is for the KV imaging. And we have a KV source. Um, if you can actually look up, uh, there is a, a small gray uh, circular uh, cover there. And the KV source is actually outside the machine shooting the X-rays into that flat panel detector. And, and then um, you can see a bunch of cameras. There are actually two cameras um, on, the, on the collimator itself. And there's a big camera on the flat panel detector. And in the corner of the flat panel detector, there's a conical thing, and that is a laser scanner. Just like the scanners, laser scanners we have outside, we have a laser scanner inside. And that is monitoring a space right in front of the collimator. So if the collimator gets close to the patient or anything else, everything stops. And this particular laser scanner is totally independent of all the other software we have in the system. Um, we also have um, here, right here, uh, towards the bore of the machine, we have another four cameras watching the patient. We also have speakers, we have microphones. So if, whenever the patient talks, we can hear, the operator can hear from outside and uh, the operator can see the patient from seven different angles, uh, which is pretty amazing. If you think about it, when you, when, uh, for other machines, when we build radiation walls, you have to actually go out and buy cameras, stereo systems, and all that stuff. Here, with this machine, everything is included as part of the system, and everything is fully integ integrated with the system. 
We also have um, air being pumped in so that patient is comfortable inside. We can uh, obviously pipe the music in through the speakers so that the patient can be uh, relaxed. Um, so it is a nice piece of equipment inside. It's actually pretty pleasant.